Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Turtle Tuesday Facebook Live. Happy to see you all popping in this morning to get a close-up tour of some of the turtles that call Shad Aquarium home. I'm just going to wait just a few more moments before I get into talking about turtles, one of my favorite groups of animals that lives here at the aquarium. If you are just joining us, welcome, welcome to our Turtle Tuesday Facebook Live. My name is Beth. I'm from the learning team here at the aquarium, and we are checking out some of the turtles that call Shed Aquarium home. There are hundreds of species of turtles in the world, and we're going to take a look at some of the freshwater turtles that live here at the aquarium. Thank you all for popping in the first thing in the morning. Coffee and turtle sounds like a great Tuesday morning start to me. So we are gonna get started talking about the wonderful animal that we're looking at right now. Our first stop on our Turtle Tuesday turtle tour is our Fly River Turtle. So our Fly River Turtle right now is resting on the bottom looking right at the camera. And if you would get a good look at that nose of his, Fly River Turtles are also called pig nose turtles. That nose of his gives you a good clue as to why they might have that other nickname. Now, Fly River turtles are native to Australia and Papua New Guinea, and they're named after one of the rivers that they're found in, the Fly River. Now, that pig-shaped nose of theirs is really important to keep them safe in their habitat. If you all are just joining us, we're checking out our Fly River turtle here in the Rivers Gallery at Shedd Aquarium. Now, that nose of his is really important because these turtles are mostly aquatic. They very, very rarely come up onto land. The only time they would come up onto land would be a female laying her eggs. Other than that, they're in water all the time. So that nose of theirs actually works perfectly like a snorkel. When they need to go up to the surface of the water to get a breath of air, they'll just stick those little snouts out of the water like a little snorkel, get a good breath of air, and then stay submerged. This is another way that they're able to stay safe, which is really important uh, for these turtles. Now, in addition to that really cool snorkel-like nose of theirs, they even have extra papillae in their throats that allows them to absorb oxygen from the water to help them stay submerged even longer. If you stay hidden and safe, a predator can't find you. So these are really helpful adaptations to help this species of turtle survive. Now, speaking of adaptations, we're getting a really good look at our turtle's back here. It's very gray in color. And if he were to move around, which he might, it's a little early in the morning, but if he starts to swim around in the habitat, you would see he has a really light colored belly. Actually, if you look at the underside of his throat, it's very white in color. So this type of coloration where the back is dark and the light, the bottom is light is something called counter shading and it's pretty common in the animal world as a way of staying safe and staying protected. Think of it like this. If I were above this animal in the water, that dark shell is going to really blend in well with the dark water around it. And same thing if I'm swimming below it, there's all of this light coming through the surface of the water. So that white belly blends in really well as well. Now, if you are just joining us, we're doing our Turtle Tuesday tour this morning on Facebook. Now, we are going to be um, seeing a couple other of our freshwater turtles, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the leaves that you might see hanging out in the back of the habitat. That helps us get a good idea of what these fly river turtles might like to eat. So fly river turtles are omnivores, which means they eat a little bit of everything. So one of those things that they might eat would be fruits that fall into the water. They might eat clam or smelt or even tree branches. Here at the aquarium, our turtle here, this is Goose. He sometimes gets ficus branches as a form of enrichment. And that's really good for him because he's gonna eat both the branch itself as well as the leaves. Some other favorite foods of Goose's here are plantains and blackberries all kinds of delicious fruits, but he gets a very varied diet throughout the day. Now, another thing I wanted to point out are those flippers of his that you can see resting on the rock right there. So fly river turtles look very similar in shape to sea turtles. Some of you may be familiar with nickel or green sea turtle. 
and they swim around in a very similar way. Now those front flippers of theirs are really important for propelling them forward through the water. They're very strong and muscular. And uh, the back legs are also pretty strong, but there's even a flap of skin. Sorry, he's resting his head on the rock. It's really, really cute right now. Uh, there's even a flap of skin um, on the back side of this turtle. So if he needed to evade a predator and get away really fast, he would use those front flippers of his to propel himself forward. And then that flap of skin on his backside, he can actually use and steer it like a rudder in the water. Thank you all. You are just joining us for our Facebook Live this morning. We are checking out our Fly River Turtle here at the Rivers Gallery in Shad Aquarium here in Chicago. Now you might see some other fish swimming around in the habitat with goose here. Those fish, while goose isn't an omnivore, aren't in any harm's way at all because he gets fed really well with all of those delicious things. Sometimes when I look at the list of things he likes to eat, all the different fruits and veggies, I feel like I should make myself a really nice salad for, for dinner or for lunch here. Now if anybody has any questions throughout our tour this morning, feel free to drop those into the chat below and we can try to get to some of those during the live. And if we can't get to all of them during the live, we'll also take some time to answer those questions later. All right, I'm looking to see if we have any questions about our Fly River Turtle before we move on. All right, he's being really still right now, but if you wanna come visit Goose in person, he is in our Rivers Gallery here at Shad Aquarium. All right, we are gonna make our way to our next stop on our turtle tour this morning. So bear with me while we take a little walk through the aquarium. We haven't quite opened yet, but today is an Illinois resident free day. So we'll be opening in about 20 minutes or so here. We are open to the public, although advanced tickets are required if you wanna come see animals like goose here or other reptiles. Now, speaking of reptiles on our way over, to our next turtle stop, we are gonna be passing up some of the other reptiles that live here at the aquarium. Now, if you have any kindergarten through second, through fifth graders in your lives that love reptiles as much as I do, we have a virtual aquarium mini camp coming up this Saturday, all about reptiles. So we'll be talking about turtles, as well as some of the reptiles that live here at the aquarium. See if you can spot the lizard in this view right here on our way over to turtles. All right, so we're gonna make our way over to our islands and lakes gallery and check out some turtles that are native here to North America. Oh, we have some of our turtles swimming around in the habitat here. So let's get a good look at our turtles. Oh, there's some basking up on the logs as well. Let's take a look at these turtles. It'll be a little easier for us to hone in on some of their adaptations. All right. So we have made our way to some North American turtles after traveling from Papua New Guinea and Australia. We are in the state of Washington now. So these turtles are called Western Pond Turtles. Western Pond Turtles are an endangered species of turtle and we are helping them out through a head starting program that's collaborative. So this head starting program has been around for about 25 years, headed up by Washington US Fish and Wildlife, as well as Woodland Park Zoo and Oregon Zoo. So when we head start an animal, what we're trying to do is give them a good chance at surviving by giving them a head start by growing up without the threat of predators around. So this program has been around for about 25 years with these individual turtles here. And Shed Aquarium is helping out with this head starting program by looking at the tiny living community on these animals and in their environments with our microbiome lab to help those head started animals be even more successful. This program has been great. 
we've been able to boost the numbers from 150 turtles to over 1,500 species. Oh, I see there is a question that popped up. Oh, Marie is curious how many species of turtles there are. Um, at last check, I believe there's over 350 different species of turtles. Here at the aquarium, we have 28 species of turtles. Great question, Maria. Thanks for that question. Then turtles are also found on every continent except for Antarctica. So you can find turtles literally anywhere in the world. Now, one thing I want to point out about these turtles here is something that makes them a turtle and makes them a little bit different than our buddy Goose there. So these turtles have really hard shells. Goose had a bony exterior or a bony interior, but leathery skin on his shell. So these turtles have a shell that looks more like what you think of when you think of turtles, that hard back. Now this turtle shell is made out of bone, but it's covered in something that you and I have on our bodies as well. The outer layer of this shell is made out of keratin. Keratin is something found all over the animal world for protection. We have keratin in our fingernails and in our hair. Turtles have keratin on their shells, and this turtle right here is swimming around really well for getting a good look at his shell. And we're actually able to see the different parts of his shell as well. So that upper part of this shell is called the carapace, and the lower part that this turtle was just showing off as he was swimming by is called the plastron. If you want to be able to tell the difference between a male and a female turtle, usually if you look at that underside or that plastron, that's going to give you a good hint as to if it is a male or a female turtle. Now another cool fact about their shells is that every turtle, no matter how large or how small, has 13 scutes on the top of their shell. So a scute is just a specialized scale. And all reptiles have scales of some sort. So scutes are those special scales that this turtle is showing off really well on his carapace as he's swimming on by. Now, because turtle shells are made out of bone, cartoons have lied to us over the years, my friends. Turtles cannot slide out of their shells. They are connected to their shells, much like our backbones are connected to our bodies as well. Now, one thing that you're seeing the turtles on this log doing is a very typical reptile behavior called basking. Now, basking is really important for reptiles because they are ectothermic. You might have heard the term cold-blooded. Ectothermic is, is the more scientific version of saying cold-blooded, meaning they use the outside to regulate their body temperature. So these turtles right here are using a heat lamp that they're sitting under to regulate their body temperature and warm themselves up. This basking behavior is also really important because it's a great way for them to get the UV light that they need to be able to produce vitamin D, which is an important part of being a healthy turtle. If you are just tuning in right now, we are doing our Turtle Tuesday Facebook Live tour, checking out a couple of the species of freshwater turtles that call Shed Aquarium home. Now, does anyone have any questions about our Western pond turtles here? We're getting a really good look at the behaviors they do from swimming to basking. Let's take a look at the questions. Ooh, great question from Julie. How long can he stay underwater? So these turtles, uh, the Western pond turtles can't hold their breath for nearly as long as the Fly River turtle we were visiting before. He can hold his breath for about 20 minutes or so. These turtles usually come up for air every couple of minutes, so not quite as long. Ooh, Lisa's curious how big these turtles get. So the turtles we're looking at right now are fully grown adult turtles. So this is about their, um, their largest size that they can get. Get. Depending on the species, different turtles get bigger. The largest turtle species would be the leather, leatherback sea turtle. They can get over 1,500 pounds. They're a very, very large turtle. So these turtles are kind of on the smaller to medium sized size of turtles. Now, Amy is curious, if the shell gets damaged, can they repair and grow? 
That's a great question. So the shell can repair itself. It is keratin, much like our fingernails. But if you've ever um, damaged your fingernail, sometimes you have a little bit of a mark as it's growing back. So that happens to turtles. And depending on the type of damage, sometimes that damage might be something that is a little bit more permanent that might need a little bit more help from human care. Nickel, for example, is a turtle that had some damage to her shell. She is our green sea turtle that lives here at the aquarium. And that damage from a boat accident um, caused her to live in human care to be able to help us tell the story of how we can be safer in the waters and also care for amazing animals like Nickel, our green sea turtle. All right, we're getting some great views of our western pond turtles here. So we are gonna make one more stop on our turtle tour before I say goodbye this morning on this Turtle Tuesday. So let's get one last look at these turtles as they're basking on that log there. So we've seen a larger freshwater turtle with more of a soft covered shell with that leathery skin. We've seen a smaller freshwater turtle with a hard shell. And now we're gonna go to our at home on the Great Lakes Gallery to visit one of my very favorite turtles here at the aquarium. Now I do have something I wanna show you before we check out our turtle itself. We are gonna go ahead and take a look at our gallery while I grab a very, very cool object to get an up close look of what an alligator snapping turtle shell looks like. So this here is an alligator snapping turtle shell. It's almost as big as I am. And this is the next turtle we're going to go see. So you can get a really good look at how large these are. And if you look very closely on the inside of each scoot, you can even kind of see growth lines, similar to the growth lines you might see in a tree, uh, in tree rings. It doesn't give us an exact idea of how old the animal is, but it has shown us how much they've grown over time. And this is almost as big as I am, and I'm an adult-sized human. So this is a very large shell, and this is a very large turtle we're gonna see now. All right, so let's zoom on in and check out what Dante is up to this morning. So this is Dante, and he is an alligator snapping turtle. We're getting a really, really good look at that amazing shell of his, that long tail of his. Now Dante is native to the Great Lakes region. He's not found in the Great Lakes per se, but you can find him in Southern Illinois, as well as in the Southeastern United States. Alligator snapping turtles, as their name suggests, have a very, very strong bite. So that bite force it would be strong enough to break bone. Let's get a good look at the side of his body. Now, alligator snapping turtles like Dante here are ambush predators. So you see him being very still, staying at his training station in his habitat here. But we're getting a really good look at exactly how still he can stay because you can see some algae that's grown on his shell. Alligator snapping turtles, for my friend who was asking about how long they can hold their breath, alligator snapping turtles can hold their breath for between 40 to 50 minutes. So they can stay underwater for almost an entire hour. That's because they are ambush predators. As an ambush predator, you have to sit and wait patiently for your prey to swim on by. And because they sit and wait so patiently, algae can actually grow on their shell. And then they look much like a rock floating around in the water. Another cool behavior that Dante here does as an ambush predator is he actually uses his tongue like a fisherman's lure. So his tongue looks a lot like a wiggly worm moving around in the water. Oh, it looks like Dante is moving around a little bit here. So let's see if we can get a look at that mouth of his. Here he comes. So Dante has got a really sharp beak. Turtles don't have teeth. They just have a tooth that they use to break out of their 
out of their egg. And then, oh, here he comes. Nice, good close-up view of Dante. They have a really hard beak that allows them to break through whatever food they're trying to eat. Look at this prehistoric looking turtle right here. If we're lucky, we might get a chance to see behavior I was just alluding to, where he sits with his mouth wide open and uses that worm-like tongue as a lure to lure in fish. No worries about the fish that live in here though. Dante is very well fed, and if he is doing that luring behavior, it's because it's a natural behavior for him. Look at this amazing, amazing ambush predator. He's so impressive. Every time I see him, I'm just amazed. He really does look a bit like a dinosaur for any dinosaur fans out there. Now I see we have a couple of questions that have popped up in the chat, so we'll watch Dante do his thing and I'll see what, if I can get to some of those questions. So Amy is curious about what alligator snapping turtles eat, so what turtles eat. So animals like Dante here eat fish. Um, he'll even get some rodents from time to time. In the wild, they'll eat just about anything that swims close enough to get into their body. So he keeps moving on us here. There we go, get a good look at that counter shading that he even has too, that lighter belly of his. So here at the aquarium, he gets fed herring and capelin, which are a very commonly fed out fish here at the aquarium, as well as the occasional rodent. And if we get a good look at his skin, you're gonna see another thing common of reptiles. Looks like he's starting to shed some of his skin on his legs. So if you see some skin that looks like it's flipping around a little bit there, and it's because he is getting ready to shed his skin, which is another common reptile trait. So if you are just tuning in, we are at our last stop of our Turtle Tuesday turtle tour, checking out our alligator snapping turtle here, Dante. Let's see if we can get a good look at that skin of his. You can see how it's starting to shed. So reptiles do shed their skin. Snakes shed it all in one piece, almost like a pair of tights or pantyhose. Lizards and reptiles tend to kind of flake it off as if um, you've ever gotten a sunburn before and your skin flakes off. That's kind of what their shedding looks like. All right, we might have time for one more question before we end our live here. It's like Dante is exploring his habitat quite a bit here. Oh, no, he's doing his luring behavior, but he's not facing us, of course. Let's see if we can get him to turn around there. Oh, let's get a good look at Dante. Alrighty, so Dante here. Ooh, what are the things sticking up on the back of his shell? Great question, Kristen. So those are just the way that his shell is formed. They're a way of protecting himself. So he kind of has more ridges to his shell than the Western pond turtles we saw, right? So another way of him staying safe. It's really thought that alligator snapping turtles might not have very many natural predators besides humans, although there isn't a whole lot known about them in the wild because they are a very secretive animal. They're very good at hiding and doing what they do. So by having Dante here, we're able to learn even more about alligator snapping turtles and what their behaviors are, including that really cool luring behavior of theirs. All right, my friends, it is time for me to bid you adieu, but I'm gonna give you some last views of Dante here swimming around. And thank you so much for joining us for our Turtle Tuesday Facebook Live. If you have fans in your life that are in kindergarten through fifth grade that love turtles or even that love the Great Lakes, we have a couple of virtual aquarium mini camps coming up this Saturday as well as in a couple of weeks. This Saturday we're going to be talking about reptiles like Dante and some of the other reptiles that live here at the aquarium. And on March 13th we'll be exploring the wonders of the Great Lakes, so more animals like Dante and other animals from the Great Lakes region. So I hope you can join us. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll get to those questions in the comments that we weren't able to get to on the live. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Thanks for starting out your Tuesday morning with us.